Tov, this Yat Dishmaya, we're going to try this again. We are in Biyam Dakecha on page Kuf Kaf Gimel on the 123rd page in Per Gimel of the chapter on Kedusha. We're going to be talking about speech and thoughts and also the Mikveh Bezat Hashem and how these things can either affect or improve our Kedusha, our sanctity and our closeness with Hashem, which we explained in the last class is the idea of seeing that Hashem is one in the world and that we have no business connecting with anything else besides Hashem. Obviously, there's levels to this, right? There's levels to sanctity, there's levels to holiness, and our goal is to ascend the ladder and come closer and closer to Hashem in clarity that there's nothing besides Him and that's all we have to work on. So, By way of forbidden speech, a person can lose their Kedusha, God forbid. When the Yetzirah is not able to come and attack a person, on what's called Midat Yasod, which Yasod is all of the pleasures of this world, whether it's sexual pleasures, whether it's eating too much, drinking too much, sleeping too much, whatever it might be, if a person is rectified there, right, and he doesn't have a hard time on those aspects in life, which is a pele, but there are people like that, right? So then the Yetzirah comes and tries to get a person in different ways. What is one of the main ways that he comes to try to attack a person? By way of your speech, a person can le- lose all of their sanctity by way of their mouth. What happens? There's different things that we can do that are forbidden speech. One of them is bizui talmidei chachamim, speaking negatively against those who learn Torah on a very high level and they dedicate their life to learning Torah. If we say negative things about them, right, it's a big problem. We can lose a lot of light because of that. Another thing is lashon hara. Whatever is considered lashon hara, there's a lot into it. This is not a class on lashon hara, but there's many, many fine details. Saying something positive about a person and even praising them could be considered Lashon Ara. It's very fine details. You have to learn those Alakot from the Chofetz Chaim, Bezat Hashem, for on another time. And also telling lies, false testif- testimonies, or telling lies against a person, or telling lies in general. A person can lose a lot of their light by way of that. And also Nibul Peh, using your mouth to say negative words, to curse, to say words that are forbidden, things that you shouldn't be using your holy mouth to say. If a person is not careful, not careful with their mouth, as I call all kedusha borach v'yotzei derech apeh, and all of the light of kedusha escapes and exits the person by way of their mouth. They're not going to feel this 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 with this pleasantness with their avodat Hashem, with their service of Hashem. There's going to be very hard for them to feel love of Hashem of Hashem, clinging to attachment to Hashem. You have to be very careful to not speak things that are not according to the will of the Creator. Even more so to mamash guard your mouth, mamash guard your mouth, mamash guard your mouth, to not say anything that is not connected to Kedusha, God forbid. If you start to speak things that don't have to do with Kedusha, you can lose everything. And even if right, it was decreed upon you that you're meant to be a great person for the next few generations. Right? You're already a big Chacham, you've done a lot of things, you've, you've put out books, you're set up to, you know, to be a, a, a person that's going down in the history books because of what you've already done. <coughs> Right? Even if that's the situation, A person who's already worked so hard to set up a legacy that they're going to be remembered in Am Yisrael forever for how holy they were, if they use their mouth in the wrong way, they could lose everything. Why? Because the speech is one of the most grave sins. Talking about another Jew, talking against Tamid Chachamim, it's one of the most horrible things you can do. There's a huge, huge elevation, a huge level to a person who's able to guard their mouth in sanctity. And then you have pulled down on that person, Melucha Vekidusha. He's like a king. He's like a holy king. He merits to my covenant of peace. Like Pinchas, who merited to Keuna for Dore Dorot. Pinchas wasn't a coin, right? And he became a coin for eternity because of what he did. One act changed, one act that he did changed his whole entire reality for the rest of the generations. Pinchas is known now as a Kohen. He became a Kohen and all of his descendants became Kohanim because of one act. Lashon Ara. Lashon Ara kashot biyoter. Lashon Ara is one of the hardest things we have to do in Amisa. One of the hardest things to keep up with. 
כי כאשר מסתובבים בין אנשים, לפעמים יש ניסיון לדבר בזה. Sometimes you can hang out with people, you start to socialize, and now, now there's, all of a sudden there's a test to talk about this person, to talk about that person. וגם לפעמים, בהכרח שומעים לשון הרע. Sometimes you're, you're forced against your will to hear לשון הרע about people. והדרך לנצל היא, the way to be saved from this is, להיכנס לרשפי אש של הבת יר, to go into the fiery flames of the, of the light of השם, באופן שלא ירצה שום דבר בעולם חוץ מהדבקות בהשם יתברך. All you want in your life is to cling to השם. וממילא כבר לא יהיה לו ניסיון לשמוע חדשות ולשון הרע. Then you're not going to have this desire, if you just want to connect to השם, you're not going to have a desire to connect to the news and all the rumors and לשון הרע that is going around, the gossip. ואם כבר שמע, צריך שלא לקבל. וכפי גדירה התורה, if you already heard it, then you, have, you can't accept it in your heart, according to the fences that are put up in the Torah. Simply put, in the beginning, you have to separate yourself from all different things of rumors and talks of Lashon Hara, and to know the holy books that are, that are dealing with these things, Chofetz Chaim, Shmirat HaLashon, all these different books that we have. And then you're going to be able to receive the power to get, be successful in this. Gam tzrich l'rechet tamid im da'at shel shalom. You always have to go with a consciousness of peace. You want peace. You're a person who desires peace, therefore you can't hear things about other people. To understand that by Hashem Yitbarach, yesh makom lekama derachim. Veshivim panim l'Torah. By Hashem, there's many different ways to serve Hashem. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be your way. There's many ways. There's 70 faces to the Torah. Velirot et nikudat ha'emet v'atov etzel kol yehudi. To see the point of truth and the point of good in every Jew. Bechol derech, in every path of avadat Hashem. כי כולם מתכוונים לעבוד את השם יתברך. Everyone has one intention, to serve השם. ג' לקדש דיבורו, לחשוב שהדיבור הוא מהשם יתברך. You have to sanctify your speech and understand that speech comes from השם. The truth is, it's not only things that, negative things that you lose your, your, your kedusha. Even if you talk things that are what's called hevel ורשות, vanity, you know, no business talking about the thing. Who are we to be talking about sports or these things that have nothing to do with Kaddish Baruch Hu, right? Like, there's, there's certain topics in life that what are you using your mouth to talk about that thing? It's not necessarily so bad. It's just, it means nothing. And you're using such a powerful, lofty tool to talk about vanity, to talk about nonsense. When a person starts to ascend a little bit and tefillah or different things, straight away, you start to ascend in your Avodat Hashem, you get this test of talking about things that you don't have to be talking about. If you're not careful, you're going to see, you're going to start to lose a little bit of how, you, how much you ascended, or at least a portion of it, if not everything. Right? Why? Because you use your mouth for nonsense, just to talk, because you feel like talking. What's the way? Try to decrease talking about things that are not needed. What's a, the, the rabbis taught us, what's a fence for wisdom? Being quiet. You want to be wise? Shut your mouth. <laughs> you have something that you need to say? First things first, think about what you have to say. Process the thought. Right? Write a little script in your head and then start to speak. There's a depth here. Even though you have to think about what are you actually coming to say? Is it true? Is it needed? You also have to be clinging to Hashem when you come to talk. You open your mouth to speak to another Jew, to speak to someone, to give over a message. You should be clinging to Hashem when you're speaking. It's a very hard thing to do, but it's what we should be aiming towards. What's the way? Think. According to your ability, according to where you're at. In the beginning of your speech. And the more you get used to this, right? With the time, you're going to get better and better at this. My speech, the ability for me to speak, comes from Hashem. And so to say right now, the Shekhinah is talking through me. And all I am is a speaker meaning like a, a speaker, an audio speaker, right? And a tool for Hashem. Hashem needs to talk right now, and I'm just the vessel to get the words out. You as a person, who are you? What power do you have as speech? 
אלא השם יתברך, הוא הנותן דעת מה לדבר. השם is who gives you the consciousness of what to speak. ואת כוח הדיבור עצמו, והאדם הוא רק כלי והצינור לכך. The power to speak and the ability to speak, that's from Hashem. Who are you? The speaker. You are just the vessel that it needs to flow through, the pipeline that it needs to come through. וזו המחשבה והרגשה יתקדשו דיבוריו הפלא ופלא. When you start to think of speech that way, that before you come to open your mouth, you recognize that my speech is only coming from Hashem, the ability to speak is only coming from Hashem, the words are coming from Hashem, then you're going to start to see wonders when it comes to sanctifying your mouth. It's not a small, easy thing to do. It's a, you know, whenever you can, like you're walking on the path, contemplate on the, on the, on the, That's how relevant this is for me. Contemplate on the air that you're breathing in, that you're bringing, bringing into your body. How you are sucking life from Hashem right now. And this will bring you closer and closer to Hashem. If Hashem wants, this is the, which obviously He wants, right? This is one of the ways that you can sanctify yourself. You're walking down the street, start to contemplate that every breath you're taking into your body is life force from Hashem. Right? This is connected to speech. You need air to speak. אמנם צריך להיזהר, you have to be careful, שלא להישבר מכל נפילה, don't get broken down from every time you fall. Specifically when it comes to the, the sanctity of speech, מצוי מאוד שאדם אומר דבר שלכאורה לא היה צריך לומר, הוא מצטער ומרגיש נפילה מזה. It's very very common that people say things that they didn't need to say, that they shouldn't have said. Right? And you feel that they, you fell because of that thing that you said, you shouldn't have said that thing. You get broken from it. You can't get broken. You can't have this. And you have to remember, Everything's coming from Hashem. It's the most intentional thing that's happening. And there's no point in having regret. There's no point in, in being, you know, now in deep sorrow because you said something you shouldn't have said. If you did a sin or you did something bad by way of your speech, you have what to fix. You said something that was forbidden, you have to do tshuva. Tshuva is part of your job in this world. You, did, you made a mess, like we just experienced. You make a mess, you have to clean it. Mm-hmm. Right? doesn't matter if you're trying to do good or not. In the end of the day, if there was a mess, part of your job is to clean up the mess. That's tshuva. After you do tshuva, after you rectify that thing, you have to believe in the power and the greatness of tshuva and how much mercy has, Hashem has on us. And to know and you have to know You have to know the power of tshuva and you have to know right now that once you've done it, everything will switch to good. The power of tshuva is that it takes those things that you did unintentionally and it switches them for the good. And don't, don't get broken at all from these things that you go through in, 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 in life. Right? Anything that you can fix, your job is to fix. And once you've done the work of fixing, you have to keep pushing forward. Mm-hmm. And we have to fight thoughts in the way of light. Right? In the path of light, we have to fight all the different things that are going on in our, in our, in our thoughts and speech and action. Another integral part of, of Kiddusha is guarding your thoughts. Don't think and don't start to go deep thoughts into negativity. Like it's written, don't get pulled after your heart. Therefore, when a person has bad thoughts, you have to fight them. But you have to know how to fight them. Right? The, the Hasidim have many different ways, the Tzadikim of the, of the Baal Shem Tov have many different ways how they told us. Some say you have to fight, some say you have to run away, some say, some say you have to change your thoughts. There's a machlok at L'Shem Shemayim, of how of how to go about fighting thoughts. About finding, but we'll, we'll, we'll see. One second. What? About finding out where the thought is coming from. Exactly what we're talking about. One second. Reshit miyad sheba machshava ra'a tzirich ligarsha. First things first, when you have a negative thought, you have to kick it out. You have to get rid of it. Don't let the thought to start to expand and, and grow in you. The faster you are to get rid of this negative thought, 
כך שיוכל להידבק מיד שוב בהשם יתברך. The faster you'll be able to cling back with Hashem straight away. אמנם הדרך להילחם במחשבות היא לא להתעסק איתם. What's the way to fight thoughts? It's not to deal with them. It's not to go into dealing with them. Meaning, שלא ייכנס לדון במה שהם אמרות. Don't go into thinking, what is this thought saying to me? כי אז הוא מחשיב אותם. Then you start to give them importance. וגם לא יילחם איתם על ידי מחשבות הפוכות לסתור אותן. Don't start to bring opposite thoughts. Don't, don't fight the thought by bringing the opposite thought in it. כי בזה מעורר אותן יותר. You're going to arouse them even more by doing that. וגם לא ינסה לדחותן שלא לחשוב אותן, כי זה אי אפשר. Don't try to push them away by not thinking about it. I'm not going to think about that thing right now. It's impossible. If it's in your head, it's in your head. What are you going to do? I'm not going to think about that right now. I'm not going to think about it. That, you're just busy thinking about that thing that you're not trying to think about. אלא הדרך הנכונה היא שמיד יתחיל לחשוב מחשבות אחרות. Straight away think other thoughts. שיתאספו את מוחו. Thoughts that are going to occupy your brain. כי אי אפשר לאדם לחשוב שתי מחשבות יחד. It's impossible to have two thoughts at once. וממילא על ידי שיחשוב מחשבה אחרת, תסתלף למחשבה הרעה. So then by, by way of having another thought, right? By way of having a different thought, then straight away, that negative thought will go away from you. והכי טוב, what's the best way? שיתחיל ללמוד בגרסה. Start learning, not with understanding, just reading. Take a book. and start to read it. Just go. Just go. Without understanding. Just go. Just go. Just go. With, with passion. Without Avena. Beretzavit Lavud Vehavena. Slicha. With continuation. With continued thought. With passion. And with a, a bit of understanding. <coughs> But if you can't do this, Azai kol machshava akhera tova hi leze. Any other good thought is for this. Afilu machshavot be'enyinei reshut. Even thoughts of like things that business or things that are not, you know, so holy. Just get your brain busy. First things first, get rid of these thoughts straight away, right? By way of being busy with something else. It's also very good to set these bad thoughts on fire by way of purifying your brain, by way of having intention on holy names. And he brings here different names that you should be thinking of, but we're not getting into it for now. It's not the time. Don't blame yourself for having thoughts. Be very careful to not blame yourself that you got this certain thought coming to your head. כי כל דבר שבא לאדם והוא משתדל בכל יכולתו לצאת ממנו מיד, אזי אין בו עוון. Anything that comes into your life and you try your hardest straight away to get out of that place, right? There's no sin there. It came to you, it's a test. You're trying to get out of it. You didn't do anything wrong. ואדר בה, even more so, it's true that על ידי המלחמה הוא מעלה את נחת להשם יתברך ומתקן הרבה. By way of going to war, to purify your brain and to stay holy in your thoughts, you're giving so much nachat to Hashem right now, you're making Hashem feel so good right now, because He knows, He sees, okay, He sent you the thought in the end of the day, and you don't want to have that negativity in your head, you're trying to go back to positivity, that's exactly what He wants. <coughs> Usually people that are serving Hashem have a lot of pain of these thoughts that come to our head. We, we get these thoughts and it's hard, it's hard for us. And we have to know that when you fight, by way of this, you're elevating such pleasantness to Hashem, such sa'anuk, such gival to Hashem that you're fighting it. Even the tzaddikim can't do this because they don't have the thoughts that we have. They, don't, they can't go into that war area that they have. Their brain is, doesn't work like our brains. They've already passed that level, they're past that level now. They don't get these thoughts, they don't have what to fight. So when we do it, we're doing something that even the biggest Siddiquim can't do. Therefore, you're not allowed to get upset and blame yourself for having a weak consciousness. Why are these thoughts, these bad thoughts coming to me? And even more so, not to have despair and to think that you're not a kosher person. Just understand that you're a lochem, you're a warrior in the milchama of Hashem. You're fighting the war of Hashem right now. And you're bringing... All these different matamim, you're bringing these delicacies to Hashem by way of your fighting. 
In the end, you're going to get to some level of perfection. You're going to get to a better, a more cleaner head. Just don't give up. Don't have despair. The fifth thing is Chakirut. Chakirut, what's the... Chakirot, yes, but... Uh, no, the different chokrim, like the books of uh, uh, the academia. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, there's, yeah. Okay. Yeah. There, there's a thing that, in, when it comes to, it, it has a klipa that's connected to thoughts, and the idea that it, it blemishes your opinions, it blemishes your perceptions in life. It comes to ruin a person's emuna. Usually it comes to a person that their intellect has a blemish in it. Because it got dirty from klipot. Because you come into everything from the bottom side, meaning from the chitzoniut, from an external approach to everything, then it can come and it can start to mess with your emuna. <coughs> you start to have questions and try to investigate what is, you know, what's going on in your emuna, because there's things that are not understanding the human intellect. They're just part of the fact that you're a Jew. You have part of being a Jew is having pure emuna. That's at your core. That's what you have, and that's what you're dealing with. You're not dealing with this level of intellectual academia and this gymnastics. You're not there. You're. You're, you're a pure yid that has emuna. You shouldn't be going in these places. You with your limited flesh brain that can only comprehend so much, you're trying to understand everything on a systematic, you know, a, a physical way. You're only limited to be able to comprehend so much. So if you try to understand deep, deep things of emuna that way, you're going to end up messing up a lot. What's the solution for this? Distance yourself from all of these different investigations and research into what's going on in your emuna. Go into simple, pure emuna, innocent emuna that's above intellect. Say to yourself, Hashem is so great. Who am, I, who am I, this small person, this creature, to try to understand Hashem's dealings in the world? It's better that I just trust Him. All the people that had the strongest godly consciousness, the strongest consciousness in the world, we all know. You learn Torah, you go into the books of the Rambam, you go into the books of Rashi, you see what Rashi wrote, you see the Tosfot. Geone Olam, geniuses. The way their brains worked. And what was their way in trusting Hashem? To lean on Him completely. They, brought, they broke down Torah for us. But when it came to Emuna, they threw their head out the window. They didn't never ever went with their head when it came to Emuna. The biggest tzaddikim that we only were, were in complete wonder why they used that word and not that word. And why they spelt the word that way and not that way when it should have been spelt that way. And then you find out that no, there was a, there was a whole three books that could be written on the fact that they chose that sentence and not that sentence, and they, this is the reality that we are in Judaism, when it came to Emunah, no questions, no, no chakira, no, no developing, no books, no nothing. Trust Hashem Barach. And they were the greatest, our forefathers and our rabbis. You have to know how small you are in relation to them and how small your consciousness is in comparison. Believe all the words of the Holy Torah. And the words of the Tzadikim. Even the things that you don't understand. From a place of complete, pure, clarified emuna. <coughs> so those were a few things that could affect our, our thoughts and our speech. Right? That, those thoughts and speech that can affect our emuna. Now we're going to the mikveh. Koach mikveh. We're lucky to be in Tzfat that we have one of the most important mikveh in the whole entire world. That we, I literally know people from this story that they tell me, I fly from New York to Israel. I want to go to stay in Yerushalayim for a few weeks. I don't step foot in Yerushalayim until I come to mikveh Ari. 
only when I go to Mikveh Ari, only when I go to Mikveh Ari, will I, will I, will I step foot in Yerushalayim. Until I don't go into that Mikveh, I don't go, I don't, I don't walk in Eretz Yisrael. Meaning, <coughs> they land in Ben Gurion, in the airport in Tel Aviv, they come straight to Tzfat, go to the Mikveh, and then they do what they want in Israel. I've heard this a few times from Hasidim, right? So we're lucky to live here. A very powerful tool that we have, and it's important that Hashem gave us in our hands to be, to be successful by way of this, to purify ourselves, is the mikveh. The Torah says that dipping yourself inside a body of water that's called a mikveh, it purifies you. It removes tuma from you. It removes negative energies from you. A person is purified and removes all impurities from him by way of dipping inside a body of water called the mikveh. The rabbis taught us, the Arizal teaches in Shara Kavanot, that uh, according to the, the mikveh of before Shabbat, Erev Shabbat, the person has to dip twice before Shabbat, one after the other. The first one is to take off the weekday clothing off the nefesh, and the second one is in order for the sanctity of Shabbat, and to get the additional soul that's coming down. And from this we understand very well that the, to- that the, 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 the mikveh has two powers that it does. Not only does it pur- purify a person from all the tumah, it's also beneficial to receive extra kedusha. And even though it's simple, it's important, the, the author says, even though it's a simple thing, that the Arizal said, it's important to bring this, right? That not only does the mikveh take off dirt from you, it prepares you to receive more light. <coughs> the rabbis taught us that tevila be mikveh enna rak kedei letzet mentuma. The rabbi says it's not just about getting out of impurity. It's beneficial to purify your body from all different types of klipot, tavot, v'yitzirim, v'rayot, anything that you might have seen during your day or your week, anything that you felt, any inclinations that you had, any lust that you had, that all of them are different types of tumah. And in addition to that, atvila be gam goremet lo sif ruach te'ara l'avodat Hashem itbar. Not only does it remove all of those different types of tumah, it prepares you to receive this new spirit of, of Avodat Hashem, to be pure in your Avodat Hashem in every aspect. How much do us, the people that are coming to connect to Hashem every day, how much would we love to have all of these lusts and this negative energy removed from us? All these inclinations. The Torah revealed to us that we had this immense tool that by way of this, not only can we purify ourselves, we can also get out of all the klipot. For sure then we have to really, really, really put the effort in to go to the mikveh as much as possible. And even though there's a scheme that say, there's poskim that say, you got two ma on you, you don't have any obligation to go to the mikveh. Ezra tried to make that the situation, but his, his decree was removed, right? Ezra tried to set it up that you can't learn, you can't say bracha, you can't do anything until you go to the mikveh. It didn't work. Because you can't make a decree on the nation that they can't stand in. The, the nation couldn't stand on that decree of Ezra. So the, it was removed. So there's poskim, there's halachic authorities that say, you have no obligation to go to the mikveh. You could live from zero to 120 and not go to the mikveh once. A, okay, you did nothing wrong. But they all agree that if you do go to the mikveh, your tefillah, your limud, your mitzvot, everything will be on a higher level. So you have no obligation to do it. But if you do it, you're, work, you're a different, you're a different uh, person, you're a different Jew. It's such an easy thing, but taking your body and putting it inside a bathtub, a pool, and getting out of it, everything ascends, and it's so easy to do. Seven shekel, five shekel for free if you go to the Ari, 10 minute walk. For, of course we have to put in the effort to do this. 
ולקח הנהיגו צדיקי הדורות לטבול במקווה בכל יום. Therefore the צדיקים of the generation, you see that they go to the מקווה every single day. To take off all the tumor that's clinging to them by way of the day, just a regular day of a person, there's tons of things that we go through. Remove it every day, remove it every day. Specifically before שחרית. And then the tefillah, your, your, your tevilah, slicha, your dipping, if you go before shacharit, now it's already achana, uh, it's, it's preparation towards connecting to Hashem. It's a renewal. And even more so on Erev Shabbat, before Shabbat, that it's explained by the Ariza that you have to do two dips. One, to take off the negative things that you had during the weekday. And two, to receive the sanctity of Shabbat. We have to be careful in the mikveh though. There's people that go to the mikveh and they don't feel uh, that they have this spirituality coming down on them of tara, of purity. As if they didn't do anything. First things first, you have to remember. There's a rule. And every Avodat Hashem, it's not dependent on how you feel. Even if you don't feel like the mikveh did anything, the light is there. They're just trying to push you to see if you have emunah or not. Again, emuna. people don't know this so much, but emuna also is rooted in the word ne'emanut, loyalty. It's not just faith. It's not just that you believe it. It's do you act ne'eman, do you act loyal to what you know is true. The mikveh is something that adds to kedusha. You have to know that that's the case. Whether you feel it or not, connect your loyalty, which is an action, to what you know in your head. Omnam k'day l'asim lev l'bet inyanim ha'chashuvim. We have to pay attention to two important, two very important things. That a lot of a lot is dependent on them. How much we're going to feel and how much purity we're going to bring down. And we're going to bring them down in the path of sumira setov. Go away from bad and do good. And the sumira side, on the negative side of don't do this, what is it? You have to be very careful to act in kedusha when you're in the mikveh. You have to be holy when you're at the mikveh. To guard your eyes. Right? It's not that you're just not allowed to look at women. You're also not allowed to look at men. If you start to blemish your eyes in the mikveh, your mikveh is not going to help you so much. And even more so, you're going from tuma to tuma because you went into the mikveh in a state of tuma, and you, while you were there, you did more tuma. Right? So yes, now even if there's no sexual attraction between men and men, you're still not allowed to look at another man. You have to get used to a few principles. You have to be tzanua yourself when you're in the mikveh. And go above and beyond to be mehadrin min mehadrin on how much you're tzanua inside the mikveh. Like the Mishnah Brewer said, if you want to check, you can check it. It's in Siman Bet. Sif Katan Aleph in the Mishnah Bura. Two, Ikar Atzlacha B'chol Davar Iyaz Rizut. The main success that you have in any Avodat Hashem is how quickly you do it. Shulo Lishtahot V'Litakev B'nei B'ni L'Veni. At least there is Mo'od. Go in the Mikveh, get out of the Mikveh. It's not a jacuzzi, it's not a spa, it's a place of Avodat Hashem. Get in there and get out. V'zehu HaMafteach L'Atzlech. This is the key to success. By way of you being quickly in and out, you're going to merit that the mikveh will do the proper thing properly, which is to purify you. Question? It's also, is there like, I, I usually do it myself seven times, so I thought that's what you're supposed to do. That's no problem. He's saying, don't take your time now. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not I'm, it's not about how long you're dipping in that. that all that is okay. Before you go in and after you get in, and if you're just chilling in the mikveh, like it's a jacuzzi, we're not talking about how many dips you do. That's all holy, that's part of your avodat Hashem. But putting your shoes on, getting dressed, right? All these different things, and talking, schmoozing, get in there and get out. Meaning, you, you do seven dips, do your seven dips and get out. Don't schmooze in there, don't relax. It's not a jacuzzi, it's not a bathtub, it's a mikveh. It's a place of avodat Hashem, right? Gimel. V'yishmor al enav, guard your eyes. Ki asur l'istakel b'brit. You are not allowed to look at the brit of a person. You're not allowed to look at another man's member. Ben shelo, 
בן של האחרים, you're not allowed to look at your own, and you're not allowed to look at someone else's. ואף לראות אדם בלא לבוש, even to see a person who's not dressed, יש בזה פגם, there's a blemish there. And if you're careful, according to how much you're able to be careful, again, like we said with the women last week, right, you're walking down the street and you have your head, you have your eyes down, like, you, like we said last week, and you're doing what you have to be doing, you're not doing anything wrong if you see something. Again, like you have a bad thought and you fight to, move, to go away from that thought, you didn't do anything wrong. Tests are going to happen, life is life. We come across things that we shouldn't see, we, we think things that we shouldn't think. The question is, how long are you staying there? So in the mikveh, you're not meant to look at yourself and you're not meant to look at other people. Whether it's at their breet or it's just at their butt or whatever it is, you're not meant to look at them. Therefore, guard your eyes down like when you're walking in the street. Yes, we're talking about men. It doesn't matter. A naked person is a naked person. It doesn't matter what, what sex they're from. You're not allowed to look at it. Dalet. Yishtadel me'od lidbol b'makom v'vazmanim she'enam tzfufim. Try to go to the mikveh in a place and at a time that it's not jam-packed. B'yifrat she'lo lamtin l'rega achron b'erev Shabbat. Specifically, don't wait to the last minute before Friday, before Shabbat, right? The last minute when the whole world is going to the mikveh and now you have to stand in line naked with 30 guys and it's impossible to, to guard yourself in that situation. There's no way you're going to be successful, right? So don't, don't, don't do that. Go at a time where it's better. Of course, dipping for Shabbat has to be after Chatzot. If you go before Shacharit, that does not count for Shabbat, Kabbalistically, right? Even though you're pure, you didn't do anything, the preparation for Shabbat has to be after Chatzot. Most people don't go to the mikveh though for Shabbat at 1 or 2 o'clock. They go at... Five, right? They go at six, right before Adla Kacharot, Nehod. And I have to do tshuva on this myself as well. Yizher me'od. Shalom le'daber b'bet ha'mirchatz. Shalom le'tzorach gamur. If you don't need to speak when you're in the shower, don't speak. Don't talk to people in the mikveh. It's not a, again, it's not a salon, it's not a spa, it's not a jacuzzi. It's not a social place. It's a place for avodat Hashem. If you need shampoo, you can say, can I have some shampoo? But besides that, you have no business speaking in that place. Now we're going to talk about the things that are set off, the good things to do. By way of dipping in a mikveh, a person returns to his root. It's fitting that we should know what's going on in a mikveh and to feel it. By way of that, the tevila is going to do, have more of an effect. Like, to, like it's explained in the holy books, that even though all the ideas of the Torah, they, they work even if you don't understand them, even though that's the case, by way of understanding and having intention and having emotion and feeling to the thing, and a, and a desire to receive, it's going to work better. It's going to do more for you, right? And even though the ashba is not at all dependent on how you feel, if a person from your side, he, he wants to feel, he wants to have this emotion and connection to the thing, you have to drill the light deeper and deeper so that it can go in. But there's two ways. If it's either you understand what you're doing and then it's going to work much better, or you don't understand and you believe that what you're doing is good and then it's going to affect you as well, right? But it's either that you know what you're doing and then you can have kavanot and you can have intentions, seven dips and all these different things but you know what's going on so now it's going to have an effect on you or you know that seven dips is a good thing and you connect your mind to the mind of the tzaddikim which is above you and you don't understand it and then it also has an effect on you and it's going to work on you right so there's two ways to get to this but the person has to be happy in any way that Hashem puts you on ki kasher adam nechnas lamikveh u ke'en shenifter me'olam when a person goes into the mikveh, it's as if you died and you're separated from this world. Losing your breath, stopping breathing, is as if you died. You can't live in water. You're not amphibious, right? We're not. We're land creatures. We can't live in water. We can't breathe in there. So then, technically speaking, since if you were to stay there and not leave, you would die. So from the beginning of going in there, it's so to say like you're dead. So when you come out of the water now, it's as if you're born again, as if you 
you're living a new life because you stopped your life. You were in a state that you could not exist in that way. And now you're getting out. Now you're getting out of it. You're a, you're a new person. In a deeper sense, when a Jew goes into the water, underneath, into the mikveh, you nullify yourself and your whole entire reality completely. By way of that, you're separating yourself from the vanity of all of the klipot, all of the husk, the negative energies of this world. And you start to purify yourself again and again. <laughs> the main thing that we have to do in Abu is to leave our uh, to leave our, our ego behind. So that leads to taka v'tfila mitachat lamaim. Again, we're talking about the good things that are, are involved in the mikveh, right? We've we developed we discussed the bad things that we shouldn't do. Now we're talking about the good things. Mitachat lamaim yecholit palel belibo. Underneath the water, you can pray from your heart. Whatever you want. You can turn to Hashem with the scream of your heart to Hashem, to, to Hashem, right? You can turn to Him and just scream, scream, scream. Rabbi Nachman says the highest level of screaming is the scream that doesn't have any sound. Right? That you can just scream and not one sound can come out, but you and yourself are doing all the motions of what is a scream, what is a scream but no voice comes out. That's the highest level. The prayer that you have, the scream that you scream out to Hashem underneath the water in a mikveh is very, very precious to Hashem. Every day you have to go into the mikveh and you have to go underneath the water and you have to think with as much power as you have that you have the scream in your heart that's underneath the water, and by way of that, you're going to come out of the constricted mindset, and you're going to come into a brand new being with an expanded mindset. You're new, just like you were right now. You were born, leidami chadash. You were just born again. You're like a brand new baby in the world, and every single Jew, no matter what their level are, you have to purify yourself at all given moments in life. You always have to start new, and even more so, if God forbid. You did something or you went through something that made you impure. Straight away, run to a mikveh and go underneath the water and scream and cry from the inner aspects of your heart to Hashem Yitbarach. Ma'alot kedusha. What are the benefits of kedusha? With this, we're nearly done with kedusha, right? So we talked about a lot. We talked about we talked about a lot of different things here in this chapter. Just to go over a quick summary. What is what is kedusha? It's a relationship and a unity with Hashem. Right? To only be focused on Hashem and nothing else. We have to sanctify ourselves by way of the things that we're permitted to do: eating, drinking, sleeping. Right? The marital relations. Anything that we're allowed to do, even there, that's the main aspect of how we can become holier, is taking the things that the Torah says it's no problem to do, and even there, doing less. Guarding our eyes when we're walking in the street, right? When we're dealing with business, when we're in the street, and, when, and especially on our phones. To not look at the words of the goyim, meaning all of their research and their books that we have no business learning. Speech and action, speech and thoughts to purify our brain. To not speak Lashon Ara, to not talk against rabbis, to not talk against Tanidei Chachamim. Our thoughts, and to, to have pure thoughts, and to purify them, and to fight the negative thoughts by way of adding more light, or just compu- completely changing our thought process. To not go into all of these mental gymnastics to understand the Munah, and what's going on, and the, how to get to, to the depths of what's going on in Hashem's thought process and His Torah, just to go with simple Munah. And the mikveh, the power of mikveh, and how to behave in the mikveh, to not uh, treat it like a jacuzzi, to not treat it like a spa, to not talk there, to not look at anybody there, to get in the building, dip in the water, and get right out, and also to have the proper intention when you're going to the mikveh, to understand the mikveh more, to learn about the kavanot of the mikveh more, and to scream to Hashem underneath the water. Now let's see, what is the benefit of doing all of this? You guard these things, you're going to come closer to Hashem. Kedusha is above all for Hashem. Kedoshim to you, Kedoshani. 
You have to be holy because I'm holy, Hashem says, right? Sanctified. ומי שעוסק בקדושת הברית זוכה להרגיש חיות אלוקות. Whoever merits to guard their breath is going to start living godliness. ולקבל מדרגות רוחניות וקדושה נפלאה. You're going to start to merit a huge ascent in spirituality. That will give you the ability to fight the klipa, to fight all the negativity that you have in this world. השומר זוכה לברכה אמיתית. Whoever guards their, their, their kedusha, you merit a, a true blessing. By way of kedusha, a person merits the sha'arei boracha amitiim. You merit the true gates of, of blessing. If you start to take upon yourself the work of kedusha, of sanctifying yourself, not only are you going to bring blessing and good on yourself, you're now going to become a vessel of influence to your friends and those around you. You're going to start to have a, a, bring down a light of purity on all of the souls of Israel. You could save it, you can save a lot of souls by way of you guarding what you have to do. By you being Kadosh, you can start to help others. We're all one soul. Am Yisrael, we're one soul. And even a Jewish person who is connected with the Holy Spirit and is connected with the Holy Spirit and is connected with the Holy Spirit. One Jew who guards his breath, one Jew who looks down in the street instead of looking at the woman, one Jew who uses his phone for the right thing and for, not the, wrong, for the wrong thing, he, he brings salvation for the whole entire neshama of Amisa, the whole entire people of Israel. You start to guard your sanctity, your, your holiness, you're going to start to see positive influences on your children, on your paranasa, on your money, on your connections and your business relationships, your personal relationships, your shalom bayit, everything is going to become better. And a person is going to start to be filled with the light of Hashem in every aspect of life. You start to work on your, on your Kiddushah, it affects everything. It brings blessing to all aspects. In the Zohar Kadosh, in the Zohar, it's taught, Whoever is zealous about their breed, you do something in order to guard Kedusha, in order to guard sanctity, Hashem gives you the covenant of peace. Hashem, so to say, becomes your beloved friend. He's like a partner with you. Hashem wants to be a partner and be connected to all of those who are increasing sanctity in the world. Pinchas, he went above and beyond to make sure that there was sanctity in Am Yisrael. To make sure that we were a holy nation. To teach everybody how important it was to be holy. And what did he marry to? Briti Shalom. He married to a covenant of peace. He became a Kohen, him and all of his descendants for all of the history of mankind. For the future of mankind, right? So at the end of the days, Pinchas, who wasn't a Kohen, became a Kohen. Him and all of his children. Why? Because he worked on Kedusha. Therefore, every single Jew who's trying to look for a skula, trying to look for some good luck thing, something that will bring blessing in your life, right? You don't need to go to this tzaddik, you don't need to go to that, you don't need to read Tehilim a million times, you don't need to do any of those things. What do you need to do? You need health, you need parnasa, you need children, you need shiduchim. Anything that a Jew needs, deal with Kiddusha. Work on your Kiddusha. And start to influence others. And then for sure you're going to merit. That's the second benefit. The third benefit, Your heart is going to start to open up in the Torah. You guard your breath, you're going to start to see excess in a whole bunch of different things. Even if you didn't know how to learn, Everything was sealed in front of you. You're going to start to see that Hashem is opening up for you all of the intellect that you need in life. You're going to start to merit to the light of Hashem in all of your service of Hashem. You're going to sanctify your children. You're going to sanctify your children. 
Bet levav zaracha. When you start to work on your Kiddusha, what does Hashem say? It's a pasuk from the Torah. Hashem does a milah, that's like a circumcision, so to say, on your heart and the heart of your children. You want your children to keep Torah? You want your children to go on the path of a Kadosh Baruch Hu? Guard yourself. When you guard yourself, you are the influencer on your children. You influence your children more than anybody else in life. So when you're holy, you're going to keep your children within Kedusha. We don't need more inspiration for that than whoever has a child, you know, to, to be holy. That's it. You want your kids to be holy and be connected to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Guard yourself. Because when a person starts to sanctify their body, he's illuminating for his children. Right? The, the external aspect of life, meaning all the pleasures of life, and the internal, all the spirituality, it's one. They all need to be holy. Everything needs to be holy. It's not that the synagogue is a place to be holy. No, your house, your table, the place that you eat on. This table is going to testify in front of Hashem, how you acted. Your eating is also part of it. The more you, pur you purify your body in action, with misirut nefesh, with sacrifice, by way of this you sanctify your children and your, your, your sons and your daughters more and more. Add sof kol adorot until the end of times. It's not just your physical children, your first immediate family. You can guard generations ahead of time by way of you working on your Kedusha. It's not only your children and your offspring. We all have people that we do business with. We all have people that we influence, people that we affect in life, that they receive from us, that they listen to us, that they get advice from us. You start to affect all of them. Students are called banim, right? Business partners, all of these people, the shiduchim that you have, is not just marital shiduchim. Hashem puts business partners together. He puts friends together. He puts neighbors together. You start to affect everybody. Last thing. <coughs> A person who gives up on their eyes and lets their eyes just be free, they lose all of their taste in Hashem. They lose all the taste in their Avodat Hashem. Whoever doesn't guard their eyes, God forbid. You don't know. All of a sudden, you, you started to lose every taste. You don't want to go pray. You don't want to learn. You don't feel like doing this mitzvah. You don't feel like doing this. And you have what? What happened? I was a tzaddik for a few months. All of a sudden, I don't want to do anything. Basically, your eyes and your heart are connected. You want to feel something, you have to make sure that your eyes are not blemished. You don't guard your eyes, your heart is going to become like a rock. Everything starts to become dark. You want to go now to learn, you can't. You open the book and you can't do it. You don't feel like learning, you don't feel like praying. Anytime you look at something that you're not allowed to look at, you don't feel like learning. You start to make a clip, a, a, another screen in front of your eyes to see the light of Hashem. Your spiritual eyes, right? You look to use your physical eyes to look at something you, should, you weren't meant to look at. It's like you put dirt on your eyes, your spiritual eyes, from seeing Hashem in everything that you have to do. How blessed are we and whoever takes from themselves after this learning to start to guard themselves, all of the gates are going to be open for them. All of the gates are going to start to open up for them. And Tzfat is Gemach Yashar. So Tzfat is this place where we're in Mesugal, is an auspicious place to start to work on these things of Kedusha. Right? So that we said a lot here. With two weeks of learning about this, a lot goes into this. And there's so much more. The next one, two, 
3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 pages is all about internet and phones. 11 pages, and it's called Anisayon Acharon, the last test. The last test, the internet and the phones. There's so much that goes into this, right? But Kedusha is everything. Kedoshim to you, Kedosh Ani. And like the Zohar says, Kedoshim to you, you're going to be Kedosh. It's, it's not a commandment. It, it is a commandment, but it's not just a commandment. It's a promise, the Zohar says. You will be holy. The question is, do you need Kafakele? Do you need Gehenom to get there? Or can you start to work on it in yourself and start to help your soul to get to the goal much faster? And after everything that we've discussed, <clears throat> Bizat Hashem, we'll have the energy to put the, to put the work in, right? To get there. To take care of our children, to take care of ourselves. So that we'll feel good to, to, to come to serve Hashem. We'll want to get up to go to Shacharit with a smile on our face, not like it's a burden. Because when, whenever we feel like a mitzvah is a burden, it's because we're not Kadosh enough. It's because we're not, we don't have that connection. We don't have the Yichud and the Shayichud. We don't have that relationship, that oneness with Hashem that we're meant to have. So Bezat Hashem, in the meantime, we're, we're each on our own level. Like we said last week, we're not trying to be hypocrites by, by saying smartphones and internet and all these things. We're learning Torah. We're all we're trying to work on ourselves. We're all trying to do what we have to do in order to come closer to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and we have to start somewhere. So Bezat Hashem, may this message help people, help us. <coughs> and like we learned, that when one person in Amisa works on themselves, it affects thousands and thousands and thousands of Neshamot. Is that the Shem?